Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you some tips for using Photos in the Mail app on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 800 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So there are a lot of different options you have when you attach a photo to an email message on your Mac. Unfortunately I see a lot of people making some critical mistakes when attaching photos. And also there are some other options that people could benefit from they just don't know about. So I'm going to start off with the biggest mistake I see people making. They go to compose a new message and they want to attach a photo to it. Now let me do that the simplest way by dragging and dropping from a Finder window into a mail message. When you put it there you'll see the image appear in the body of the message. That all looks fine. Except if you look closely here you'll see this pop-up menu to set the image size. A lot of people don't know that that's there and they don't see what it's doing. In this case it's taking that photo which is taken with an iPhone and it's pretty high resolution and it's reducing it to 640 by 480 which is pretty small and only really good for viewing something on the screen. If your intention is to send somebody this photo so they can view a high quality version of it or perhaps add it to their own photos collection or even print it you don't want to use medium. You want to go to at least large and you can see the file size change here. This is still a pretty small file compared to the original size and large itself is actually only going to be 1280 by 960 in the case of this photo. If you really want to send them a good copy of it you're going to have to go to actual size and you can see the file size goes up quite a bit but in this case you get a really high quality version of this photo. A big mistake I see is people using medium or small and expecting the person on the other end to see details. I see this just about every day when somebody sends me a screenshot. I ask them for a screenshot like this and they send me a screenshot but they've got the image size set to small. And at that size you can sometimes barely read the text that's on the screen. Now when you attach an image either by dragging and dropping it or using the paper clip button here at the top and then selecting a file it's going to put the image exactly where your cursor is in the message. That is unless under Edit Attachments you have Insert Attachments at End checked. Now when I go to drop an image here even if I put it in the message you can see I'm putting it above the signature it's going to add it to the end every time. The selection in here will be remembered so check or uncheck it as you want. Now sometimes I hear about people sending email messages to Windows users and the Windows users not being able to see the photos that are attached. This problem used to be pretty common but now it's pretty rare. Now an important thing to remember about email is when you send an email to somebody they're reading it using their email app which is going to be different than yours. They might be using Windows. They might be on a mobile device. And how the message appears to them depends on their app. Their app could render things completely differently. Show them different fonts. Show them different styles. Show attachments in different ways. If you have a friend that uses Windows, particularly if they're using an older version of Windows, you might want to make sure that under Edit Attachments you have checked Always send Windows friendly attachments. That may help them if they're having trouble viewing the photos that you send. Now when you create a new message and then you click the Attach button here there's an Options button and there's a checkbox for Send Windows Friendly Attachments. Then you can use this to do it on a per message basis. So when you receive an email message that has photos in it you'll see those photos in line in the message. But if you want to get a better view of them you can click to select a photo and then hit the Space Bar for Quick Look. This will bring up the Quick Look window just like in the Finder and you can expand it or even click here to go full screen for that photo. You can also select All, Command A and then use Spacebar for Quick Look and you could go through all of the different photos that are attached. Now if you want to save a photo from the message you could drag and drop it. So I could take this photo here and drag and drop it to the Finder. I could also Control click or right click on a mouse, two finger click on a trackpad and use Save Attachment to save that file with a standard File Save dialog. Also if you go to the top to this line here and you hover your cursor over it you'll have some controls. And one of those controls is to save all of the photos or just one of them. You can also export them all directly to the Photos app. Now when I reply to this message by default the images won't be included. However if I go to Edit Attachments I can select Include Original Attachments in Reply. Then when I reply you could see the photos are there. And note I still have this control here. So I can shrink these all to small. 
I can't use medium or large because these were already shrunk somewhat so I can't increase the size like that. But if I go to actual size it will include the originals. Now you don't need to have this option turned on all the time. You could reply. There's this button up here. Include attachments from original message. Click that and you can see now it throws those in. Now sometimes viewing these photos can take up a lot of space on the screen. You can control click and then choose View as Icon and do that for each one of these. And then they'll all be shrunk down to just icon size. You can control click on them again and say View in Place. You can also just select one and then press the space bar to use Quick Look. Now if you rather not get the photos in your messages at all until you select to download them there's an option for that. If you go to Mail, Preferences and then go to Accounts and then select the account under Account Information you should see Download Attachments and you can change from All to Recent or None. None means that it won't download those initially. You'd have to click on them and then it would download them from the server. Now when sending photos you should always be concerned about the file size. About how much data you're sending the receiver. When you go to compose a message say I'm going to attach a bunch of photos. I'm going to drag and drop 17 photos to this message. Notice at the top here it's going to give me message size. You always want to pay attention to that to see how much you're sending. But also notice when it turns red it means you've exceeded the maximum size for a message according to your sender. It's going to depend on your email service. In this case I'm using iCloud and the maximum is 28.3 megs. So you can see this message isn't going to be able to send. I could do things like shrink the messages down and you can see now it's fine. But you should always shy away from sending lots of photos or any large attachments to somebody by email. You don't know what their situation is. Even if they have a high speed connection at home and it's usually no problem maybe they're getting your email message while they're out of the house or away from work where their mobile data is precious and you've just eaten a whole bunch of it up by sending a whole bunch of photos in a message. One setting that you've got for this is under Mail, Preferences, and Accounts. And then under Account Information there's Send Large Attachments with MailDrop. And that uses Apple's special service that instead of attaching the image in the mail message it's actually going to put it in a temporary storage space on Apple's servers. And then when they view the message it's going to download them from there. So it's not going to use the email service to send those attachments if they're too large. But it doesn't help the person on the other end as they'll still be downloading those large messages. So you may want to consider alternatives to actually sending lots of photos. One alternative I've talked about before is simply to create a shared album in the Photos app. You can select a bunch of photos then go to File, Share, and create a shared album. Once you have a shared album like this one here you can click here and set it to a public website so anybody can view it with just this link. And then copy and paste this link into an email message. Or if they have an Apple ID you can invite them and only they would be able to see it. You can use other services as well like Google Photos or Flickr. Or if you just want to do it one time you can go to a site like Imager and this allows you to just for free upload a photo. It creates a link to that photo and then you could share that in an email. So instead of somebody getting an email message that's a few megs in size they get an email message that's tiny and it just links to the picture at a website. And of course if you have your own web server then it's easy to upload images to that web server and send them a link directly to those images. Now let's say if you composed a message in mail and you've attached a picture to it. You can do more than just send them the picture. You can also mark it up. If you look on the image here at the upper right hand corner you'll see this button. Click that and choose Markup. And this allows you to use lots of tools, ones you may be familiar with from the Preview app, to mark up the image. So for instance I can create a shape like an arrow and have the arrow point somewhere. I can add text and change the text size, font, color, all of that. I can even click here and then draw right on the image. I can even crop the image so I don't have to send them the entire thing. And then you'll send them this image. Your original image that you have is untouched. It's only this copy that you're sending them that actually has all these changes that are applied directly to the photo. Now also using your iPhone or iPad you could take a photo and then have it directly attached to the message. So I could be composing a new message right here. And if I click this button here use the options here. Take photo, scan documents, or add sketch. And these will all then call out to my iPhone or iPad if I had one connected to the same Apple ID and instantly show me the camera interface or the scanning interface or a drawing interface on my phone. And I could do any one of these and then that would get attached to my mail message on my Mac.
You also don't have to start the email message here like this and then attach photos to it. You could do it different ways. For instance in the Photos app you could select a photo and then use the Share button here and then Mail and it will open up a new email message with that photo already attached. You can select multiple photos and do the same thing and all those photos will be attached to the message. Another thing you could do is you could drag and drop a photo to the Mail app here in the dock and it will do the same thing but with a file instead of from the Photos app. Now here's one last tip. Say you get an email from someone and has a bunch of different photos and you save those photos out. You save them to the Finder. You save them to your Photos app. Or maybe you just look at them and now you don't need to see them ever again. Well you don't have to have those photos saved forever in your email archive. You can remove them from the message while keeping the text in the message. So maybe they included some important information in the text that you want to keep but you just don't need those large photo files attached to it. When viewing the message you can go to Message and then go to Remove Attachments. And that will remove those attachments from the message. You'll still have the original message. It'll still be saved in your archive but now it's taking up much less space. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.